Hey boys, welcome back to some NRL Super Coach. It's going to be the round five. Yes, round five. I had to remember that. It's it's uh, dude. I don't know what it is. Like preseason takes so long to get to round one, and now we're already fucking round five of the season. It's it's flying by way too quickly. But um, I uh, yeah, we're doing the we're doing the pre lockout discussion here, and it's a um, yeah. I'm I'm still torn. I'll show you what I've what I've done. Um, so I saw a few comments, like people, people were, um, given a few suggestions and I have sort of gone with, with some ones and I, I, I did, the more I looked at it, the more I was like, this sort of makes sense. So I, I had already got, yeah, I traded out Luke Garner for Jackson Ford. Apparently, apparently Garner's out this week. So maybe he did have like a head knock or, oh no, he's... <laughs> Apparently he's getting rested this this week, so I don't, I don't know. It's still uh, Garner's obviously gone for Jackson Ford. I, I mean Ford's just a fantastic purchase even this week because of that that low score a couple of weeks ago. His price has not ballooned. He started at 280k. It's only gone up 40k. So if you don't have Ford, I still think he's I think he's probably the best buy. Like he's the best. He, well, him and he, him and Connolly Lemuelu are definitely the best uh, cheapies to buy. Unfortunately, well, I don't know. It probably makes it because Lemu, uh, Lemueli, uh, Lemueli, <laughs> he's um he's only sent to wing at the moment, but he is going to get the dual status. Apparently, next week he's going to get that, which is annoying. But if he was sent to wing second row, honestly, I I I don't know what I would have would. I can't speak. I I don't know what I would have done, either gone Jackson Ford or Connolly Lemuelu because yeah I don't know on they they're similar price and Lemuelu I think maybe has a bit more upside than Ford. I think he's got a bit more about him. I mean I know Ford's called seventy two. Yeah, he's had a couple line breaks in his in his limited games. I mean what actually he scored like seventy in his uh. <clears throat> in round one as well, didn't he? I know, 59. So, still still pretty solid. But, yeah, the fact Connolly is only sent to wing, unfortunately, I think he's going to be a guy that I just I, I can't bring in. Um, and I could, but I just don't think it's best for the team as it stands. So, the other trade we have made is Josh Schuster in for Adam Dewey. Now, I... Yeah, I mean, I... It, it was a it was a tough one, but for one, I do think Schuster is a is a must have. Like I know, I know his base is very bad, and he only scored twenty six last week, but he got I don't know he got like sixty the week before. I just see, I just see some big scores coming from him. He's taking on the Knights this week, which makes it a lot juicier. I mean, I know that the Knights have actually been pretty solid. Their <laughs> their defense has been pretty damn good with with missing quite a few stars, but. I just like it. I mean, the next couple of weeks, Panthers Melbourne is a little bit uh, <laughs> a little bit shaky for sure. But then it's the the Tigers Gold Coast, so um, yeah, it's gonna be maybe I, I might have to have like one week of Schuster stinking it up next week against the Panthers. But I sort of expect, yeah, I mean, he could stink it up this week against the Knights. Like that's sort of the the player he is. But do we? I mean. <sighs> He's, I mean, I know he's gone back to fullback. He's been shuffled all around. I just, with the injury, all that, I just think it's time to jump off. And the other fact is I need the money. Like, I need the money to go to Hines after the buy. So, I'm not going Hines this week. I actually I actually can't go Hines if I wanted to go... For, so, as you see right now, 446k. If I trade out Tanner Boyd, well, I guess I, I could... I could go Hines. I could go Hines. Obviously, I could trade out Wade Egan and shift Tanner Boyd back up to dummy half and uh, and get Hines in that way. But um, no, I'm just not. I'm. Just, I like. I want to see more of Egan. He's still got money to make for one, 
and he he looks potentially like a keeper as my second dummy half. So I want I just want to see Egan again. It's it's so annoying that he was out last week with concussion, but he's back this week. Get to see another look of him, and I don't just want to trade like. I know he's made good money for me, but it's, it just seems like such a waste to trade him out. And, and and I do just want to get rid of Tanner Boyd as quick as possible. And the plan again, the plan was to wait until after the buy. If Hines comes get, uh, if Hines comes out and gets another, I don't know, 150 plus. I mean, fuck man, what do you do? Like it's <laughs> oh, all I all I can do at that moment is just laugh it off and and uh, and cry myself to sleep. But um, if it happens, it happens. But I'm not. Uh, I, I, that's the only way I could get Hines in, and I don't want to trade Egan out yet. And I can't afford Tanner Boyd. He's only, I'm only like 70k less or 70k off. So I guess I could, instead of Ford, I could go a, a cheapy. But yeah, there's no one there really, and uh, I, I want Ford in the in the side. So that's how it's going to be. Um, and I just like that plan better. It keeps the squad stronger overall. Obviously, now the 5.8s uh, are an issue. But the, the other thing with Katoa, Katoa, um, I mean, one of these guys definitely going to look to trade him up to... I think Dylan Brown is still the... I think he's the target at 5.8. I mean, Munster probably is the best, but Dylan Brown doesn't play Origin. The Eels cover the buys really well over that time, I think. So I think Dylan Brown is definitely the priority at 5'8", but the Eels, they have a tough run anyway. Like, he only scored about 40-odd last week. They have the Roosters this week, so that's that's a tough one, potentially. Um, who else Who else do the Eels have? And they must have their buy coming up soon-ish, maybe. Um, 12... Oh, it's only round four, so it's it, it's a while away actually. But um, well, <laughs> I said a tough run. They sort of <laughs> they sort of had their tough run after the Roosters. That's where it gets juicy with the Tigers, Bulldogs, Broncos, Knights, Gold Coast, um, Raiders. So I would like to try to get him in uh, soonish. But yeah, with bringing Hines in and hopefully Dylan Brown, um, that's a lot of cash to spend. Um, but we got trade out options coming later. You know, Bryce Cartwright, Sean Lane will be back soon. I I I don't know. I thought he was back in like five. You know, round four, round five. So maybe a couple of weeks left of Bryce Cartwright to score well. He'll definitely be a trade down option. Um, the back line, obviously. I actually do think. Kira is potentially just with like I mean he's so safe to score like 50 plus points with base but I just don't trust the dogs to play that well against good opposition so you know if, if the dogs start struggling again and Kiraz looks like he's going to drop a lot of cash you know you could trade him down for someone a bit cheaper Lachlan Miller as well the Knights actually the Knights actually have a really bad run coming up as well um I think so it's mainly New Zealand, so not not the worst. Then Panthers, Cowboys, Eels, Gold Coast Sharks. Eh, it's it's sort of it's sort of all over the shop, I guess. So Miller Miller is also a guy I'm I'm keeping an eye on to potentially downgrade. Um, or go to like a Ruben Garrick. Um, that's sort of I might not downgrade these guys, but if if I flip them off to like a Ruben Garrick, because Ruben Garrick is probably the priority in the centre wing. So, but yeah, basically, I'll, 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 so I'll talk each position who I'm, who I'm looking for the future. Um, center wing, obviously, Ruben Garrick. Five eights, Dylan Brown, hopefully. Halfback, Nico Hines is coming in after the bye. The back row, I mean, honestly, Ryan Madison is probably sort of top of the list now. The fact that he's playing big minutes in the back row. Um, and just, yeah, he's work rate, he just, he doesn't really seem to do much, but he scores so well. Um, who else? I, I don't know. I mean, the back, the back row, I'm happy with it. Um, I don't really have any top line guns apart from for feeder, I guess, but yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it hasn't really been that type of year so far. I know Cullen Matungi's killing it, but, um, I don't know, maybe, uh, Isaiah Papali'i, he's, he, he's going okay. Johnny Bateman, <laughs> I mean, Bateman is, uh, 
has scored pretty well his, his first couple of leagues. So I don't know if you could if you could swing Bateman before he goes up in price, maybe. Uh, the front row. So I think well, Tohu Harris. So I, I did mention that Tohu. I thought. I thought I heard that he'd done his ACL that game, um, but apparently that was not the case, and he's actually been named this week, which is surprising. Um, but yeah, Tohu is definitely probably priority in the front row in a few weeks, this, <laughs> because surely he's only going to play 80 minutes with that. I, I, I sort of doubt he'll play this week, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much that. And then the dummy hearts, I'm pretty much set for the dummy hearts, unless I, waiting and shits the bed. And, uh, but I mean, that's the other thing with Egan. If he does look the next couple of weeks, if for whatever reason, um, because I mean, honestly, Freddie Lussick was, was pretty good playing big minutes last week. So I don't know, maybe Freddie spells waiting in a bit more in the next couple of weeks, which would be annoying. But if he does and Egan's minutes drop even more, um, and he's just, you know, I'm sure the tries will dry up. So if that happens, then we can shift Egan onto, um, onto, I actually no, <laughs> it's not going to work like that because the plan I, I, I was thinking of, so scrap that. I mean, Egan still, we could shift him off to someone else, depending, um, free up some cash or, or whatever else. But, uh, he, he sort of, you know, just wait, wait to see how he goes the next couple of weeks. Hopefully he comes back and just plays big minutes. Um, but uh, what I'm thinking, so I haven't activated the trade boost. I didn't use a trade boost last week. I've used one. But one guy, now again, Connolly Lemuelu, I think is a great pickup, but he just, <sighs> granted, I, I could get him. I could get him for, I actually think Alamotti is not a bad option um, because I think, Lemuelu is going to make more money, but Alamotti, I mean, he's he's just really solid, so I, d I don't really want to trade any of the cheapies. I mean, Khan Pereira, if for whatever reason he gets dropped for Ken Mamalo next week, it's going to be a bit of a <laughs> bit of a kick in the guts, but, um, you know, you can't trade him out after he's got, like, back-to-back -back hundreds, dude. Um, it'd be insane. Warbrick, you're not going to trade him out, so, yeah, Lemuelu, no... What I'm thinking, though, is Jonah Pezzett for the Storm. He is 200k, bottom dollar cheapie. He's looked really good. He's going to get one more starting week this week. Uh, who are the Storm actually playing? They're playing the Rabbitohs. So, it's, eh, I don't know. The Rabbitohs, they are still missing a lot of forwards. So, I don't think it's necessarily the toughest game. I think it'll be a good game, but I don't... I think there'll be points scored. So, Pezzett still might score well. He is looking... I, I think he's looking at about a 100k increase um, if he scores half decently this week. So, if I trade Tanner Boyd, use my trade boost, trade Tanner Boyd down to Pezzett, that's 200k, basically 200k right there in the kitty. Then, the price increase for Pezzett, another 100k. So, let's say, I mean maybe a little bit overs, but 300k netted from that one trade. Basically, it's either it's either hold Boyd and then just, you know, make any other moves I need to make, make it a little bit more money elsewhere, however it works. Or even if Tanner Boyd, Tanner Boyd could come out next week, play pretty well, increase in, in cash, and then we potentially could go straight Boyd to Nico Hines. Or... We use one extra trade. Use one extra uh, one extra trade. Tanner Boyd to Pezzet, and then Pezzet pretty much straight on to Nico Hines. The uh, after his buy. So I I think it's the more I the more I was thinking about that. I think it's worth it because I mean three hundred k for I mean it's a it, it is it is using a trade boost as well, which does you know, it does make it a little less uh, nice to do. But 300k, it just, it opens up so much because then I have, I basically have another 200k to to use elsewhere after the fact. Because like I said, I need money to bring Dylan Brown in. Uh, Room and Garrick would be lovely. I would love to have like four gun center wings. That would be fucking beautiful if I possibly could. Uh, that seems maybe a little bit unlikely, but if it can happen, it'd be nice. Um, and then the, 
and then the back row, um, you know, there's a couple of more expensive guys. The back row, like I said, it's a little bit less pressing, I would say. So it's mainly the halves and the and the center wing. So I, I I think I like that idea just to get the money because you never know. Tanner Boyd, I was looking at it before the Titans after the buy they do come out and play uh, the who is it the yeah the Dragons. So like. Are the Dragons going to be fucking awful again? I don't know. The Titans are still probably going to miss a, a couple of players, a couple of key players. Tanner Boyd could stink it up. He could go big. If he stinks it up, it would, it would sort of really ruin... Um, I could still make the money to go to Hines, but it would just leave me a little bit less flexible. So I, I, I sort of like... I sort of really like that idea. That's, that's sort of what I'm leaning towards. I'm going to just... I'm going to do it now. I'll see how it looks. Because, I mean, I, I want to get rid of fucking Tanner Boyd. I mean, I know he scored actually, you know, half decently the last couple of weeks, which is fine. But getting in Pezzard, making like 300k off the trade, that's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. And I have saved a couple of trades over the, few, over the first few weeks. So, I don't hate it. And it just, yeah, it just, it just leaves me in a better position going forward. And it, it, it takes a little bit less risk next, you know, the next couple of weeks, depending like what happens after the buy with, with, uh, Tanner Boyd, if he stinks it up, he might lose a bit of cash or, um, this or that. So I like that. I do like that because then if I go, um, So yeah, next, uh, well, after the buy, well, I won't be, I don't know why I said I'd be like 200, I won't be like 200k over, I'll be like, yeah, like like 100k, I guess, over, because, yeah, let's let's say Pezza gets up to like about 300k, and then I trade him off, um, well, actually, we'd, we'd only just be over, so I, I still, I still think this is, um, this is the better idea anyway i think um i'll have a little bit more of a look about it um see if i like it but that that's sort of that's sort of what i'm leaning towards and i gotta be honest this week i'm not actually as concerned about not having nico hines anyway now i know they're taking on the warriors he could go massive again but i feel pretty damn confident about tom jaboyevich's captain he got what did he get 58 last week it was a pretty tough game. He had a lot of carries. Just nothing really went their way. You know, he scored off forward pass. It wasn't... He, he didn't really have any, like, genuine line breaks or not too much um, in the attacking stats. They take on Knights, who I know the Knights have been pretty solid, but it's 2 p.m. I just feel a big, big score coming for uh, Trebojevic. Now, maybe not. <laughs> it might not happen, but I feel a lot more confident this week about my captain and... It just makes it a little bit less scary not having Nico Hines because, yeah, I mean, if he goes big again, if I have Trebojevic as captain and he goes big as well, it'll just, it'll even itself out a little bit more. So, yeah, that's that's the other reason why I'm not that concerned about um, not having Hines. Don't get me wrong, I'm still very nervous about it, but we'll see. <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully he fucking stinks, dude. I would love for him to fucking stink it up. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, at, at least he'll probably get like 60, 70 points still. Like he's just that type of player. Um, but the rest of the team, it looks pretty solid. Like I, there's not really too many decisions to make as well, which is nice. Like Fafita is out with the bye. So um, Preston will just put him into the starting team. Our bench, Wade Egan. Um... No, it's a Kamanu still. Well, we could play him, but I'm not going to. Uh, Cartwright, Jackson Ford, and Reese Walsh. I guess the oh, well, I, uh, I guess the one decision now is: Do I play Pezzet over someone? I mean, Reese Walsh and I think Egan are pretty much must plays. I mean, Egan is a little bit nerve wracking now, um, taking on the Sharks, but yeah i mean he's he's been killing it so it'd be weird not to play him um but do i play Pezzet over maybe ford i i, I am half tempted to do that because yeah against against the rabbits he, he's been really good 
He's been really, really good. I'm going to have a better look at his stats for the last couple of weeks to see how his base has been. But I'm not, uh, I'm not against playing him because then it makes the decision to trade him in a bit nicer as well. If he comes out and gets another 60-odd 60, 60 points, it'd be nice. Um, but we'll see. Uh, but let's let's have a quick look at some some players. So I, I'm, yeah, I do like this as it stands. Obviously, the five eight is an issue. <laughs> we can't deny that. But um, I don't know. It's just it's set up pretty well. And I guess Pezet. Yeah, he'll get the price rise this week, and then next week when Hughes comes back, there's there's a chance that Pezet gets a bench spot. I. I wouldn't imagine he would, but I'm not going to lie. It'd be nice if he did because I don't know if he... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what his break-even would be. It might still be in the negatives potentially. So he might just have to play a few minutes and, he, and he'd get a little price rise again. But we'll, we'll see. Depends what he scores this week probably. Um, if, that, uh, if that actually happens or not. Uh, but let's let's have a quick look at some some plays. So I want to see the price of a few. So, um, oh, so there's the the total points. So Jacob Kiraz is actually on top. Jermaine Hotgood is still there. Colin Matangi, uh, Britton Nakora, dude. Britton Nakora, two percent owned. What a what a super pot he would have been to start. Harry Grant, Payne Haas, Ali Katoa, ninety six. I mean, look at the. I, I, I own, like... I mean, I know I just brought in Harry Grant, but I have Kiraz, Hopgood, Lockie Miller, Fafida, Reese Walsh. I got a lot of the top point-scoring players. So, Dylan Brown, he scored 47. I really hope he scores low again. I mean, dude, he is... He's almost 800k, so it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough to bring him in soonish after we get Hines in, but... You know, we'll see what happens with the other cheapies. I'm sure something else will pop up, um, and we can we can definitely make money off off some of the guys who are who are going to hit their ceilings pretty soon. So I'm not, you know, it is what it is. Um, but let's have a look at so center wing. I was I was sort of keen on. Um, so Nick Meany's been really good. Jermaine Asaka there. Um, Jesse Ramey in one twenty. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I would love to... Again, I would love to bring in some more Sharks players, but they're starting to get pretty expensive. Um, and I mean, Ramey was already pretty expensive to start, but 120 with with Nico Hines back in the side, they just look far better. Uh, Ruben Garrick, 71. So, yeah, he's not going to get too much lower than like mid 700s really like maybe he goes down to like 700 if he has a couple of stinkers next couple of weeks but i don't think he will this week <laughs> against newcastle so yeah garrick potentially if if Keraz or miller sort of hit a bit of a ceiling it could be a uh, you know potentially a sideways switch but i do think garrick for the long term is is i think garrick is better than miller and Keraz if i'm being honest i i just I just feel more points coming from him in the long run than both those guys, but I, I wouldn't say by too much. Uh, Montoya has actually been pretty solid. Matthew Timoko, uh, God, I've always, I've always sort of wanted to uh, to own Timoko, um, but yeah, he's always been like at that awkward sort of five hundred, bit over five hundred price. And he always like scores solid, but he's never really had that huge ceiling in him, so. Yeah, I don't know. He he always looks like an absolute weapon, though. I love I love watching him. Val Holmes there, Herbie. So Ronaldo, <sighs> unfortunately too, because Ronaldo, I think he was actually going to drop some some decent money. Um, because what did he score? Uh, well, he got he got nine. <laughs> I d yeah, I didn't realize he got nine in the first week. Oh my god, how did that happen? <laughs> How did he get nine? Um, and then he got 60, 70, 96. So he, he sort of, he's gone upwards. So it would be a nice time to jump on him, if I'm being honest. But yeah, just just can't can't make that work, unfortunately. Um, I mean, we could, <laughs> potentially. Uh, if I trade, well, honestly, if I traded out like, if I didn't get Pezzets, 
Could I afford it? Nah, I, I can't do that because then I couldn't afford lines. <laughs> uh, who else? I mean, honestly, Jackson Paulo. He's been a sneaky pickup to start the year. Obviously, they had the buy, so he's going to go up a fair bit more in cash. Um, so only 26 against the Dolphins. I mean, that was just the Dolphins killing it. 91, 101. So, oh, I got to be. If you're sort of in a luxury position, Jackson Paulo, he is not a bad option. The Roosters. A, a couple of tough games, Parramatta, Melbourne, but then Sharks is somewhat tough, I guess. Dragons, Warriors, Cowboys, eh, not the easiest sort of rounds, I guess, but man, Jackson Paulo, I did like the look of him just being on in the Roosters team on the wing. Like the Roosters, even though they haven't been great to start the year, they still have points in them. Uh, Dane Gagai has been killing it since he's been back. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Mike Acevo, 19. Shocker. Uh, but yeah, that, that's... I mean, Michael Cheekam. So again, another 50 for Cheekam. He's another cheapy... I mean, center wing second row forward would have been so lovely. 300k. Would have been nice, but yeah, he's just... He's one of these guys just going to slip by. But he's not really going to hurt you. I mean, yeah, he's going to make some money. He, he's a safe play. Um, and the dual position is very nice. But just can't afford to... Just can't bring him in. Unfortunately, just can't just can't bring him in. Uh, Selwyn Cobbo also is not a bad pickup because he's been shocking. I gotta say, like 24, 22, 58, and now 73. Like in real life NRL, he's been pretty bad as well. Like he's he's had a lot of drops. I mean, he's he's had some good performances, but he, he hasn't quite hit his straps. But they got a good they got a damn good run coming up. The 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 Broncos and Cobbo. He's probably bottomed out in price at tick over 500k. Don't uh, don't hate that again if you got a bit of a luxury trade to, to get someone. Um, so Brian Toto, so 57 for Toto. He's still going okay, honestly. But yeah, I mean, you look at some of the cheapies and uh, some of the cheaper guys. He hasn't quite lived up to the potential. Uh, Philip Semi, 69. Uh, Zach Lomax with the 18. <laughs> I mean, Lomax, if he can drop some cash again, he, he's a guy that would not be a bad option at some point. He must have scored well in... Oh, yeah, so round two, he got 82 in the, the Titans game, 59 against the Bronx. I mean, he's a damn good player, Lomax. He just, I don't know, he just hasn't had the consistency that you would like to see. Terrell Sloan, a lot of people brought him in, but <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He's a risk. He's definitely a risk. Um... But that's um that's pretty much it. I, was there anything else? I mean, let's look at half. Uh, well, uh, let's look at halfbacks and five eights because I'm I'm curious to see any other five eight potentials and also halfbacks. Um, so if we look at, <laughs> look at that dude. Look at the points. Nico Hines, one eighty, <laughs> unbelievable. So Dylan Brown is still he's topping topping the halves at the moment. He hasn't had a buy, obviously, as well, you gotta remember. But um, you know, 47. Almost in 10% of teams, which is fair enough. Sean Johnson has <laughs> dude, Sean Johnson. He he's wound back the clock. The Warriors are, are, are playing some good footy, and Johnson has been damn solid. 74, 60, 41, and 89. Granted. He scored well against bad teams, and then against the better teams, he hasn't scored great. So I, he's been good, but I definitely wouldn't be bringing him in. <laughs> Just a bit of a bit too much of a risk for me. Uh, Adam Reynolds, twelve percent of people own Reynolds. That is that's crazy. That's wild to me. Twenty-seven points. I mean, I know he's been really good, but. I don't know. Reynolds has never really been super coach relevant. He has he has spurts where he does pretty well. And I mean, you know, if you started with him, you definitely had some big scores. But yeah, uh, Cherry Evans, he got a 62. Not too shabby. Adam Dewey, like I said, I'm getting rid of him. He's still on 24% of teams, but I don't know. With Yeah, I just, for my team, I do think it just makes sense to, to get rid of him now. Cut the loss. Um... We got some good points from him, and and I do think Schuster is he's just a must-have. I I think uh, Ezra Mam, 
A lot of people have from him as well. He's been really good, but 29 points. Luke Brooks, the, the masterful Luke Brooks, only in 0.6% of teams. He got a nice little 50. Uh, um, Mitchell Moses. Moses is actually a guy to definitely keep an eye on. Um, I haven't even really seen too much. He got, he got the 83 against the Sharkies. He got the 16 against the Storm, 59-53. Then he's got the Roosters this week. Again, I I mean, well, he's only halfback, isn't he? So, I, I, yeah, I can't get him. But if for whatever reason you didn't... you, I mean, you've got to get Nico Hines. But if, if you don't have Cleary, I mean, honestly, going to Moses... Going Moses instead of Cleary, I, I can see some big merit in that because Moses can definitely get on some rolls. The Eels can get on a roll and they've got a pretty good running coming up. So Moses, I, I actually, again, if I didn't have Cleary, I'd be I'd be very tempted by Moses to to snatch him up. Um, Cody, so let's, let's switch it over to actually uh, just 5.8s here because Cody Walker is a guy I was interested in looking at as well. So let's have a look. So Dylan Brown, yeah, he's the guy that I, I want, but he's not. I don't think he's a must-have because he, he's not a goal kicker. At the end of the day, he's got really good floor, but he's never going to absolutely ruin your whole season if you don't have him. Um, Dewey, we talked about Ezra Man, but Cody Walker... He's been pretty shocking as well, but he came back. He got he got two tries. Um, so yeah, 30, 44, 42, 80. And then they got Melbourne this week. And then it's the Dogs, Dolphins, Panthers, Broncos, Storm, Tigers. Eh, it's it's not... I, th I thought that draw got a little bit better after, but it's sort of a bit hit or miss again. I, I It'd be a pretty ballsy play to go Cody Walker. <laughs> But if you got, I don't know, if you got really cheap, if you got really, like if he, if he, well, not really cheap, he's obviously not going to go extremely low, but if, if for whatever reason, like if Schuster gets some quick money, it, or if Gatoa gets some good money, and if I can't afford like someone like a Dylan Brown, you know, saving a couple hundred thousand to go with a bit of a flyer of Cody Walker and playing on matchups, don't hate it. Honestly, don't hate it. AJ Brimson... Obviously, unfortunate for him. Um, yeah, I was very keen to start with him at the start of the year, but even when he's been really good, he hasn't quite got the scores you would like. Um, Gamble, Wyden, Burden. So, Burden got a 50. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's still in 14% of teams, but yeah, not great. So, Munster, 78, which is... I, I got to say, I'm still shocked he only got 78 points. It looked like he... It looked like he should have got 100-plus in that game. He was just in absolutely everything. But, yeah, only the 78. Um, anyone else? Anyone else of note? Schuster there. So, Brandon Wakem was a guy to keep a, a watch on. But, yeah, only, only 26. Yeah, just... I mean, the Tigers, like... He got that 50-odd in, like, 20 minutes the week before. Everyone was sort of... Ooh, this could be a nice little cheapie. But, no, nah, I just... I. I I, I couldn't go there. Um, I mean, even like, honestly, Kalen Ponga, it still, it seems like he's going to still be a few weeks away. So it might not work for what I want to do. But again, if I couldn't afford to go Dylan Brown, if Ponga came back, I mean, I know, he, yeah, he's, he's still at risk of concussions, but every player is at the end of the day. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate taking a punt on Ponga because he looked really good. He looked really good. He got 70-odd in the first game, 72. He only got the one. So, I mean, I guess with Ponga, you could even wait a couple of weeks and he, his price would probably drop because of that one score. So, Ponga, hopefully he does come back fit and and firing. I, 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 I just want to see Ponga back, dude. I, I would hate it if, for whatever reason, he, he couldn't make it back in. Um... But yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Matty Frawley. <laughs> the wondrous Matt Frawley. I mean, <laughs> as a cheapie? I mean, I don't know, dude. Like, he's probably not going to keep his spot, but he's a pretty underrated footy player. Uh, Anthony Milford is 400k, so I wouldn't do it. Um, and then, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I guess the guy to keep it on here is 
uh, Carl Aluapu. Aluapu, I think. I don't know. Is that how you pronounce it? It doesn't seem like he's going to get a start anytime soon, but Jesus Christ, dude. Like, Carl Flanagan, he is trash. Like, I know... The dogs have been half decent, but I, I think their halves have been awful. Like, I think Burden has been pretty crap. I think Kyle Flanagan has been pretty dog shit. So, does the young kid eventually get a spot? Hopefully, because he'd be a beautiful downgrade, like, middle of the year when um, you sort of have no one else to go to. But we'll, we'll see what happens there. Uh, but that'll probably wrap it up. Um, I've still got to decide if this is what I'm going to do. I like it at the moment. Um... Like I said, I just think it it just leaves the team a bit more balanced. The 5-8 is still the main issue, but at the end of the day, I still think Schuster can can fill the spot. Isaiah Katoa potentially can score some decent points. So it is what it is. Did I even I feel like I didn't even look at this, did I? <laughs> I know I was gonna I was gonna look at it. Who have they got? So Dragons this week, I'm not playing him. Cowboys, eh, not a terrible matchup. Rabbitohs, Titans. You know, Katoa could score some decent points in the next few weeks, potentially. But, um, but yeah, hopefully you guys are enjoying the Supercoach action. I mean, let me know in the comments section. <laughs> um, but, you know, I go with my gut on these. Well, I try to. At times, I don't, and it, it kicks me in the butt. But, um, but yeah, I, th I think this is just what I'm, I'm going to do. There's definitely some moves to make the next couple of weeks, but... I'm excited, dude. I'm excited because there's, there's plenty of plenty of moving parts at the moment. So hopefully you guys are enjoying. Make sure to like and comment and I'll see you in the next one.